Today I'll be talking about the Electric Eel Wheel Nano 2 for the first time. I was really sort of stuck between a name and eventually I just sort of went with the Electric Eel Wheel Nano 2. It's a lot bigger change than we had from the Electric Eel Wheel Nano 1.0 to the 1.1, so I think 2 is a fairly good name for it. Let's start off with the motor. I've increased the size of the motor. This one will have more speed and more torque. A pretty frequent request on the Nano 1.1 was a better way to do the tension, which had this sliding elastic cord. Well, I've replaced that here with just a dial. So on this one, it works much more like the electric eel wheel 6, where you just turn this dial to get less or more tension. Also, you'll notice that the flyer no longer has the arm screwed into it. I've made the flyer a single piece on this design and that's going to address the issue where the flyer arms weren't always perfectly straight before. Uh, now since it's a single piece you can expect the flyer arms to be one piece. It also lightened the design a little bit which is always nice to have a little bit lighter flyer. Another thing I've been spending a lot of time on are the sliding hooks. So these are a slightly redesigned version to help prevent tangles and make it a little bit easier to move the hooks. Also, it prevents the yarn from ever touching the uh, plastic arm there. So I think that these are a step above uh, what was on the Electric Eel Wheel Nano 1.1. However, another avenue that I've been exploring that's just completely different are plastic sliding hooks. So these actually, in our testing, have been doing very well. Uh, they prevent a lot of tangles. I'm still working with the exact size, but these are pretty easy to slide as well, and yarn tends to get snagged on them a lot less often. So I haven't final, finalized the, the decision on which type of hook we're going to go with, and if we go with this hook... Uh, or the metal hook, it's going to be uh, a slightly different version than you see here. Both of these are bo both of these models are going through more iterations before I select a final hook design. But um, yeah, I think either one's going to be better than the Nano. Uh, one thing I was concerned about with the plastic hooks is that they can wear out over time. But what we're finding is uh, because each hook has two sides, uh, this side and this side, and you can just flip them around by taking it off like this and then uh, putting it on again. You, you basically double the number of your hooks and maybe I'd include four of them. They'd actually be a little bit cheaper to produce this kind of a hook than the metal hook. So I could probably include six of them and you've actually got like uh, 12 hooks then. And in my testing, they've shown very, very little wear uh, especially with the harder plastics that I'm going to be using for injection molding. It shouldn't be a problem with them wearing out. So I think we might be slightly leaning towards this kind of a design, but definitely give me any feedback if you've got it. And then a change that I pulled over from the electric eel wheel 6 is that the bobbins screw together like this so that they can no longer come apart. Sometimes people had issues with the nano bobbins coming apart. So the, now I screw them together and they're not going to fall apart when they get full of yarn anymore. One big change I made to the power system is now I use a standard USB micro plug like this that goes directly into the electric eel wheel. Just like that. So this means that if you have a USB micro cable that you use for your phone, it will be able to power the a nano. That said, I'm going to include a standard wall plug. This is similar to a phone charger. Actually, you could use this as a phone charger for a lot of different phones. And I'm including this extension cord so that you can plug this cable into it. What this, the reason I went with this configuration is this gives you a long cable if you want to plug into the wall. But if you want to use it with a battery pack, you just get rid of that whole portion and you can plug this much shorter cable into the battery pack like that. You plug this back into the Nano and that is connected. So this makes cable management uh, a lot easier if you're using a battery pack, but it keeps the flexibility and long cable if you're using it with a wall power. So I really like this setup. Another big difference with this version is you'll notice that it's not doing anything until I flip this switch and that turns it on. So this makes it a lot easier 
to access this nice large switch, which will come with it uh, instead of the little switch on the side, which on the previous version had sort of a middle position to turn it off. But since I'm including this external switch, now this, this switch only has two positions so that it's much easier to control without that middle position. You can pick your S or Z twist, but um, you don't have to worry about uh, having to fiddle for that middle position because I have this extra external switch. You've probably already noticed that the bottom has suction cups. These are totally optional and they're not going to be installed when it ships to you, but they will come in a little plastic bag and if you want, you can use them. I think on many surfaces, it is a nice way. I mean, on this table, they don't actually stick. It's like an old, worn, used table. If you had a nicer surface on a table or a glass table, they'd actually stick. But even without sticking, they kind of provide a nice cushion and it, they also are a little bit more grippy than the bottom of this plastic case. So I think that on most surfaces, they're an improvement, and I think a lot of people are going to start using them. The pulleys on the previous version were kind of a weakness. They sometimes would crack and things, so I redesigned the entire pulley mechanism so that uh, it's a lot thicker plastic on the shaft, and it'll hold on to the shaft tighter, and cracking won't be as big of an issue anymore. The PCB is completely new design. I've added, well, obviously it's it's got this kind of a plug, this USB plug instead of a barrel jack like it had before. The motors are going to have a plug instead of some screw terminals, which uh, both cuts down on cost and makes replacing the motor a bit easier. Also on the other side of the circuit board that you can't see, the electronics have completely been reworked and I think they're a lot more robust. There's things like thermal protection that I didn't have before. There were certain ways a motor could fail before that would destroy the circuit board. Those have been addressed. So as far as I know, the circuit board should be much more robust and I haven't had any fail in my stress testing yet. So uh, that's looking really good. Another thing that I really focused on with this new flyer was I worked to remove all of the play. And what that does is that helps keep the noise down. So this is a lot quieter out of the box than the previous version of the Nano, which is important to a lot of people. And there's going to be a lot of a lot less clicks and rattles and things like that. It's not going to be as quiet as the electric EO Wheel 6, which has, you know, a steel flyer and bearings everywhere on the bobbins. I, I didn't include those just to keep the cost down. I really want to keep the price of this updated version as close as I can to the previous one. I actually planned on doing it at the exact same price, but with the cost of all of my materials and shipping going up, I'm probably going to have to increase the price of this new version a little bit, but it's going to be very similar to the electric eel wheel Nano 1.1 in price, but it'll have all of these different improvements that I've mentioned. I'm still trying to decide whether I'm going to have a Kickstarter. If I do have a Kickstarter on this, it will be a much shorter time frame because I think I'm going to uh, get the product into manufacturing before I would launch the Kickstarter for this version which is not how I've done past Kickstarters, but I kind of want to give my customers the option of getting it at a discount if you want to try this new version of the uh, Nano. So I'm, I'm leaning towards a Kickstarter for it, but I'm not really sure. I'd be happy to hear your input on, on that aspect of it. If I did a Kickstarter, it would definitely be priced a little bit below the Nano 1.1 for the Kickstarter just to sort of help with that initial batch being um, really large. And uh, that really helps me sort of cover some of the overhead of the mold changes that I've done for this version. Oh, one more thing about the Kickstarter. I'll probably offer a version where you can upgrade. I'm thinking the circuit board in the motor of the previous one to this circuit board in the motor. It wouldn't have all of the improvements, but as soon as I start bringing over the improvements of the new case design, that kind of becomes nearly as expensive as just buying a whole new electric eel wheels. And if you have any questions or comments, just let me know. Thanks for watching.